Is your environment helping you succeed in starting or stopping a habit? Hi, my name is Samer Abuselbi. I'm the host of the show Super Awesome You on the Super Awesome Mix podcast network. You can find more about us at superawesomemix.com. And of course, follow us on Instagram at superawesomemix. Last week, we talked about the topic things that fire together, wire together. And in summary, this was this idea that basically things that kind of go hand in hand end up being always hand in hand in your mind. The example I gave was the famous research experiment with Pavlov and the dogs, where he would introduce food and then ring a bell. And so the dogs basically began to associate the bell ringing with food being introduced. And so even whenever he rang the bell and introduced no food, the dogs would still salivate in preparation for food to be delivered because those two things were firing together and therefore wiring together. And the wiring, of course, is in reference to the neurological pathways being built in your brain. So another kind of neurological pathway is a habit pathway. We are a collection of habits as human beings. We do a lot of things automatically every single day without a lot of thought as to why we're doing it and what we're doing it at the time. There are many examples of habits that probably many of us have, such as toothbrushing, and habits that might be you know, particular only to you. For example, for me, a habit that I have is that usually around two o'clock every single afternoon, I really want to get an iced coffee. And that's been a habit that has formed over the last several years, and it is one that has hurt my bank account, but here we are. Let's talk about habits real quick and why there is a three-part series. So habits really can be broken down into three major steps. The first one is the cue or the trigger that you see. The second one is the action that you take whenever you are triggered. And the third one is the reward that you get whenever you follow that action. Then the reward basically feeds back into the cue system so that the next time you see that cue, you are reminded of the reward and then you follow through on the action. Let's do a couple of examples and I think you'll really understand this. So I mentioned toothbrushing. Toothbrushing is actually not something that has been around in the same way that it's been around in the last hundred years. Toothbrushing was created a long, long time ago, but it was kind of a really difficult habit to get people to do. You can also think about flossing, right? Like flossing is not a great habit that a lot of people have. Most people floss generally right before they see their dentist because they want the brownie points for appearing as if they've been flossing all year, all year long when they actually haven't. And I would say that's because there's really no good reward for flossing your teeth, except maybe bloody gums and like a weird feeling. But in general, the action that you have to take is like awkward and you're shoving your hand around in your mouth and contorting this and that and like floss is kind of difficult to handle and wind around your fingers, etc. I could go on and on about how much I just like flossing. Toothbrushing had the same problem up until about a hundred and something years ago. Toothpaste is not a very delightful thing to put into your mouth and brush your teeth with. It wasn't until a marketer basically decided, hey, what if we put mint into toothpaste? Because then that creates a reward at the end of brushing your teeth. So then the marketing campaign really kind of settled around this idea that like you just finished your day or you just finished a meal. Don't you want your mouth to feel refreshed again? And so the cue in that case is that you finish your meal or you finish your day. The action that you take is brushing your teeth. And the reward that you get is the nice minty feel in your mouth because you just finished brushing your teeth with a mint toothpaste. Then basically toothbrushing really took off in the United States and I'd argue in most of Western world. That is fascinating to me that basically they took something that was not a habit and turned it into a essentially global habit and then a lot of people do it because they followed this trigger system of there's a cue, there's an action you take, and then a reward. Another example of marketers using this power of habit, and by the way, that's an excellent book that I recommend everyone read, is with Febreze. So Febreze actually was kind of struggling to pick up in the market. And they had, were first marketing it towards people who really needed to deal with like serious stain, you know, and odor removal, like people who work with like animals and animal control, for example, who would get sprayed by skunks and things like that. Like they developed a really powerful odor remover, but they were targeting this really niche audience and they couldn't find, you know, enough people in the broad audience to go out and buy Febreze. And it wasn't until someone kind of realized that the reward was, why don't we add like a clean kind of laundry scent to it? And the reward is that you now have a home that smells clean. And so the idea is like you're cued by, you know, your home not feeling like super refreshed and clean and doesn't smell great. It might smell stale. 
The action that they want you to take then in that moment is to spray for breeze. The reward you get is that clean smelling scent of like fresh linen or you just did laundry and that kind of thing. Then it took off from there. They found a way to kind of generalize it and build it into a habit that we could all relate to. So when I asked that question at the beginning of this episode, is your environment helping you or hurting you when you're starting or stopping a habit? Really what I'm asking you to do is think about the cues in your environment that either start a habit or stop a habit. Step one is to really think about the habit that you're trying to stop. So for me, that iced coffee habit, I'm going to use that as an example. Let's say I want to stop that habit. I would think about the cues of what makes me start that habit process. The cues could be, well, it's always two o'clock in the afternoon or sometime near two o'clock. That could be a cue. The cue could be that a friend is asking me to go out for coffee. You know, whenever I worked in an office and I had a number of friends that also liked having coffee in the afternoon, the cue literally could be them slacking me and being like, hey, let's go get coffee. The cue could be that it was a lull in my day because often I didn't have a lot of meetings around that time. My meetings were either in the morning or very late afternoon. And so perhaps in that time period, it kind of felt like I wanted something to do. So the cue could be, hey, something to do could be to go out and get coffee. It was reinforced through time because the reward at the end of it was that I got to go out. I got to speak with a friend and hang out for a little bit. I got to drink a nice, refreshing cold drink. I got that boost from the caffeine. There were like a lot of reward aspects to it. But we'll get into that in a couple of weeks whenever we talk about that third step. For now, let's focus on that cue. So if I wanted to stop getting iced coffee, I would think about those environmental triggers of what's getting me to start that habit. And one thing I could do is basically experiment with that. Perhaps I schedule some meetings during that time period and see if I just book myself solid from 1.30 to 2.30, do I still want to go and get iced coffee or not? Or is it really just kind of that time period and the fact that I don't have anything to do that is triggering me to want to go find something to do? Could it be that being in an office environment was a, was an environmental cue? Perhaps maybe I work from home on certain days and see, do I go and get iced coffee when I work from home? Maybe just the fact of being in an office and being near iced coffee shops makes me want to go and get iced coffee. So there are a number of ways to think about your own habits and what you're trying to start and stop. If you're trying to start a habit, you know, in my example, let's say I wanted to start drinking more iced coffee, I might rely on the time trigger rather than a location trigger. So that way, if I am working from home and I still really want to get my iced coffee every single day at two o'clock, I could use a calendar inviter or reminder system to where something dings on my computer or my phone says, hey, it's two o'clock, go get an iced coffee. And then I start to kind of build my habit off of that. I don't recommend doing that because like I said, it's a very expensive habit and one that I should probably break, not start. But I'm just using this as an example of how you might use a cue system to help you start a habit. Many episodes ago, we also discussed using the environment to help you do things like using the 20 second rule. So if you're trying to start to learn to play the guitar rather than watch television every single night, the cues in your environment could be placing your guitar right in front of your TV. So that way, whenever you're looking at your TV, something you naturally do and you habitually do, your eye is also drawn to the guitar stand that's sitting right there in front of it. Perhaps you put the remote right next to your guitar or you put the guitar next to your remote. And so whenever you're reaching for your remote, automatically you are cued by the guitar and a reminder that, hey, I want to learn to play the guitar. So these are ways to kind of hack the habit system. And like I said, this week, we are just focusing on the cue part of it, the very first part, which is the environmental triggers. So this week, your homework assignment is to think about things that you are either wanting to start or wanting to stop. And what is going on in that moment whenever you are triggered by something and you begin a habit loop? What are you doing? What are you feeling? Who are you with? What time of day is it? These are all the types of things that you can kind of write down in a journal and begin to help you understand what's going on in your brain whenever you begin or start or wanting to start a habit. Appropriately, I thought this week's song of the week is called Breaking the Habit by Linkin Park because obviously the title is called Breaking the Habit. So there's really no other reason why I would pick that song except for that other than the fact that this album really rocks from Linkin Park. I have been enjoying it so much again lately. I kind of rediscovered my love for Linkin Park. I used to listen to them a lot in high school and in college. And so it's been a lot of fun to kind of rediscover the album. And also they recently did a re-release of uh, at least one of their albums, which is excellent. So Breaking the Habit is the song of the week. And so are there habits that you're trying to break? Are there habits you're trying to start? 
either way, I hope the song kind of motivates you and gets you in the right direction. So until next Tuesday, I hope you have a super awesome week and best of luck thinking about the habits that you do.